briefly, I just wanted to hear a little bit about your experience. I mean, you, you talked about getting to know Rich Piana. Um, I think at one point there was like a little controversy between you and Rich Piana, if I'm not mistaken. But I kind of just wanted to briefly hear about your thoughts on him. Obviously, he was a very controversial figure in the industry. A lot of people really loved him. A lot of people thought he was the worst thing that happened to the industry. Um, you know, what, what kind of opinion did you have there? Rich, me and Rich used to talk a little bit via email. I wouldn't say we were close because we weren't in any any shape or form. Um, and we didn't particularly get into anything personal. What I found quite surprising was he was very much, yeah, come and see us at the show, come down to the stand, we'll have a chat. And then it was very, very apparent when I turned up, he was incredibly uncomfortable. Hmm. Now, I'm not the most astute when it comes to reading body language, and even I saw it. Uh, it was actually the people I was with, which was my wife and a report from the BBC that were much more aware of what was going on. We had a picture together which he disliked, and that obviously got posted. Of course it is. Of course I'm going to post a picture of me with Rich Piana. Uh, and yeah, there were a little bit on my part, there were a little bit of, yeah, this was the biggest sort of thing. But yeah. there was no... It, from my part, it was very much just social media banditry. It was nothing more than that. But Rich seemed to be quite... Uh, other people made more of it, uh, particularly those that didn't like Rich or didn't like what he was doing. And so it was blown up as a, a bit of a rivalry. And, and the, uh, dude, I've seen memes about the day I dwarf Rich and stuff like that. But it's bollocks. I mean, he had a lot better quality physique than I did. He was in a lot better condition than I was. But uh, he stopped talking to me after that. Really? Yeah, he just, boom, silence. Because uh, he had originally spoke to me about potential sponsorship. Mm. Uh, or at least working the stand. And then when he met me, that all disappeared. And, and what I, I, Rich was, a, I think, genuinely a nice guy. I don't think he was a particularly vindictive guy. And I know there's, there's been issues with him and that moron that ordered the whatever it was order on him where he got loads of phone abuse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah Jason <laughs> Genova. So, yeah, but to be fair in all that, you know what? Jason's mother and his so-called worker should have been far more policing on Jason's behaviour, but they allowed him to do it because it made him fucking money. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, Jason's got mental health issues and everything else. But at what point do you excuse someone making someone's family life hell? Right. And how many people could say in the same situation they wouldn't have gone round and had words? Yeah, yeah. Because his wife was getting death threats and all sorts. Wow, was it to that extent? Yeah, yeah. It was ridiculous the level it got to. Wow. Um, but... Um, you know, I, I just, I always found Rich a very nice person, but a very insecure person. And then I started, I like, this is probably a bad habit of mine, I don't know, but I'm, I'm a big people watcher. Okay. Uh, and I will post stuff online or I will post comments in conversations because I like to poke and just see how people react. Sure. Uh, and it became very apparent with Rich that he was very insecure. And, and then it became very apparent. And I, I know he'd been open a couple of times about having issues with other drugs. Uh, and then he let out that he ran an insulin growth hormone protocol before he went to an expo. So basically, he was turning up at expos 20, 30 pounds bigger mm. than he naturally was through um, super compensation of glycogen and water within the muscle using GH and insulin. Uh, and it was stuff like this that Rich was getting into. And he, he, he turned out, you know, he, 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 t he was probably actually inside quite lonely. Yeah. He never seemed to, to be one with himself. He never seemed to quite be able to accept who he was or where he was. And though he was very successful financially and, and to a lot of people, he was, you know, a very influencing factor in their lives. Uh, deep down in himself, he actually seemed quite unhappy, and hence the recreational use and, and obviously right. everything that led to his demise. Uh, Rich, whether you hated him or liked him, I don't think it really matters, but 
the the fitness world was a bit of a less colorful place once he'd gone. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, I appreciate you talking about it because I mean, it, it's a little bit of a somber note, but it's true. I mean, you just consistently hear about people who are just in these kind of darker places. Um, and I think, unfortunately, you know, kind of like you said before, when you were natural, you didn't really care if people used, it was just something you didn't know. And, and likewise, I mean, I think, you know, there's sports and maybe situations where people are going to do what they're going to do. But I, I think a lot of the time people are turned towards the use of these drugs, not because they're thinking about it in a healthy way, but because they maybe have these demons and, you know, they really want to impress other people. And I think it's important to kind of get that out there because, um, like you said, Instagram, they're all heroes and uh, you don't you don't see the other side about how lonely a lot of these people are. And you know, Do you know what I think the biggest driving factor behind steroid use is? What's that? People are fucking lazy. <laughs> I mean, honestly. Yeah. This is going to sound elitist, and I don't mean it this way, and I don't mean it to come off like that, but 20 years ago, powerlifting and bodybuilding were very niche sports. And they were very niche sports because only a few people had the fucking balls to do what it took to do it. With the popularization of drugs, it's allowed people who don't have the balls to play at something they were never designed to play at. Mm. It's like auto-tune allowing me to make a release <laughs> a single. You right. know, I, I can't sing for shit. I cannot hold a note. But computer software would allow me to release a single. That does not make me a singer. Uh, and drugs have very much enabled a generation of people that would have no interest in bodybuilding who would have tried it and very quickly fallen to the wayside because they just could not adhere to the diet or the amount of training intensity that's required to build a physique the proper way. Yeah. Because they would not have gained success. So they would have got bored, they would have got frustrated, and they would have fallen away. Right. But then you add drugs, which allows them to achieve some success, and now they're presenting a physique that is beyond their ability, really, without drugs um, and as a result that furthers their drug use and it creates a vicious cycle but the vast majority uh, I think drives people into drug use is the fact and I'm talking about non-competitive drug use here even to competitors to some degree but it is the fact that they're fucking lazy the biggest single thing I see in the sport today that hinders people's achievements is the simple fact that they cannot or do not train hard enough. 